I hope that you are. I thank you so much for coming out. Um, let's hope and pray just another few weeks of this nonsense and we can be back in church. Uh, in my mind, there's no reason why we aren't there now, but um, I don't make those rules, right? Uh, so anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to sing the chorus, uh, first verse and then the chorus of a new name in glory. All right, so they're, they're on in there, I think. to the Lord in prayer this morning, and I uh, asked Denny to, uh, to lead us in prayer, and so as we pray, let, let's pray for those, let's pray for those folks that need to hear the gospel today, and let's pray for those who might be in our neighborhood that can still hear, uh, that might just need some encouragement, might need the gospel, uh, let's pray for each other, let's lift each other up to the Lord, and let's pray that this nonsense is soon over, amen, and we can get back to... Uh, more of a normal life. Let's hope and pray. Good morning, y'all. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, today and every day for your goodness and your grace and your mercy, Lord. I'm thankful, Father, for the chance to gather together, Lord, and I'm thankful for each one that, that showed up, even though we are in a parking lot, Lord, that just, uh, we can feel your presence right here among us. Lord, I pray, Father, for this service today. I pray, dear God, that your name be magnified, Lord, above all others. I pray for all those that are, that are watching or listening to us, Father, or, or even in the neighborhood, Lord. I pray, dear God, that they hear a clear presentation of the gospel, Lord, the fact that you are indeed God, that you did come to this earth, Lord, that you suffered our punishment, Lord, for our sins, willingly, Lord God, and that, that you went to that grave, Father, and you rose again, Lord, and you were seen by the multitudes. And, Father, you are coming again, Lord, and I look forward to that day. I pray, dear Lord, for all those that are sick, Lord, and not able to be with us. Father, for all those that have lost loved ones, dear God, and in these recent days, I pray, Lord, for just peace and comfort for them. I do pray, Lord, that, um, that Lord, that we just feel you in our midst today, Lord, and I pray for our country, Lord. I pray, dear God, that, that, that you just lay your mighty healing hands on our land, Lord. For our president, dear God, I pray that you guide him. For our governor, Lord, I pray, Father, you save him. I pray, dear God, that you just, just be magnified, Lord. Just, just show up right here with us today, Lord, and show off, Father, as only you can. Lord, we just love you and thank you and praise you for everything and in everything. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Since Jesus came into my heart and then standing on the promises... And then our scripture today will be in Acts chapter number 1. So since Jesus came into my heart and then standing on the promises.
Amen. Thank you all for singing. And again, remember, if you bought one of the old hymnals, uh, you can always bring that and find most of these songs in those old hymnals. Um, Acts chapter number one this morning. Acts chapter number one. I'm going to read uh, this morning verse number one uh, down through verse number eight. And then we're going to pray and we're going to uh, just see what the Lord has for us and hope the rain holds off. Amen. If it starts raining, I'm going to duck off these steps. Okay. So y'all <laughs> just bear with me. All right. Acts chapter number one, uh, verse number one down through verse number eight. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, uh, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them, that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, Ye have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you once again for the opportunity you've given to us to gather together uh, as a body of believers. And Father, I lift up each and every one that's gathered in this parking lot and those who are, are listening today um, uh, by Facebook and those on the radio and Lord, I just pray that you would encourage the ones that need encouragement, bless the ones that need a blessing. Uh, Father, bring conviction and chastening where that's needed. But most of all, uh, today, Lord, may the name of Jesus be glorified and magnified and high lifted up above all names. And Father, we just want to thank you for your mercy and your goodness. We thank you for salvation to sinners like us. And we do ask you, Lord, if there's one soul today that needs Jesus uh, as Savior, that today you would show them their need. Father, we thank you that Jesus came, that he became our sin on that cross, died and rose again the third day. Thank you for that. We can never repay you, but we praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, Acts chapter number one starts the, uh, the ball rolling, really, with uh, going into the world and preaching the gospel. Uh, obviously, we, we've seen this already in the gospels where Jesus said we would go into all the world and preach the gospel. Acts chapter number 1, Jesus makes the statement that the Holy Ghost is the one that's going to give the power. And then we don't see the church actually going and doing until Acts chapter number 8 verse 1 uh, after persecution has come. Um, by the way, might I remind you that the persecution came for two reasons. Uh, the persecution came, one, uh, because Stephen stood up and preached a powerful sermon and the, the Jews hated that sermon so much, they brought persecution to all people who were believers. And the second reason was, is that God was trying to fulfill uh, what he had said to these people, try to get them to do what they're supposed to do, which is to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And they were quite content to stay right where they were. And so God had to bring this uh, time of persecution upon them so that they would be driven to other parts of the world. By the way, today, here in America, we ought to stop and thank God for just a minute that God did bring persecution to the church from time to time because that's how we ended up with the gospel, dear friend. And we need to stop and understand that that may still happen in our generation. Amen. Don't be afraid. We live in, uh, not in fear, but we live in power. Is everybody with me this morning? Amen. And so today, as we look at this message, we're going to talk about this same Jesus. Look at verse number 11 with me. I didn't read that far, but look at verse number 11. Which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. This same Jesus that we're, we're worshiping and serving today is the same Jesus that they worshiped and served in that day. It's the same Jesus uh, that the Bible talks about. It is the same Jesus. And this same Jesus gave command 
This same Jesus uh, showed himself alive. This same Jesus spoke encouraging words to them. And this same Jesus left. We're going to talk about that today. Uh, it's this same Jesus. And one of these days, this same Jesus is going to return again. And the Bible says that when Jesus does step foot on this earth, uh, every knee is going to bow. Everybody's going to see him too, by the way, when Jesus steps foot on this earth. And I want you to understand this. When Jesus does step foot on the earth, out of his mouth goes that sharp two-edged sword that we've talked about many times, and his enemies shall be defeated. But today, I want to talk about the Jesus that uh, we worship, the Jesus who died on the cross and, and saved us, the, the Jesus that has come and has gone away and will one day come again. This same Jesus, if you look at verse number 2 and 3, this same Jesus showed himself alive. The Bible says until the day in which he was taken up, after that through, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Let's just talk about that for a minute this morning. He had showed himself alive. This morning we serve a risen Savior. This same Jesus is alive forevermore. This same Jesus is the Jesus that after his passion, what's the passion? The passion is where we celebrated at Easter time. The passion is when he suffered upon the cross of Calvary for our sins, when he became our sin for us. And then he died on that cross. And then he was buried and he rose again the third day, victorious Amen. over hell, death, and the grave, and yeah. giving us the victory Amen. over hell, death, Amen. and the grave, church. What a glorious Savior we have. It's this same Jesus. And after that passion, the Bible says, he showed himself alive. You see, Jesus didn't just get up out of the grave and then go straight to be with the Father. For 40 days he walked on this earth. And in those 40 days, the Bible says, he gave many infallible proofs. If you stop and just flip back a page or two, and you read a few things, you will see uh, when Jesus was laid in that tomb, uh, it was a borrowed tomb. And it was borrowed because he wasn't going to stay there. Isn't that good news? And it, we could go over there today and probably find that hole in the ground, but you're not going to find the body of Jesus. Why? Because he is alive. Then we talk about uh, Jesus appearing to his disciples. Remember when Jesus appeared to his disciples and he walked through that wall and there he was in the midst of them. But Thomas wasn't there. How many of y'all read that in the Bible? Amen. And Thomas wasn't there. Thomas doubted. And he said, oh, I've got to put my hands in those nail scars. I, I want to see him. I, I've got to experience him personally in order to believe. But, but Jesus came and he said to Thomas in verse 27 of chapter 20, he said, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. Thomas didn't even have to reach out his hand. He didn't even have to put his hand in those nail scars. Why? Because Jesus being in his presence and showing him those scars was proof enough for Thomas. Then the Bible tells us that Jesus said unto him, he said something very important to Thomas and I hope we get it today. He said, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. None of us in this parking lot this morning have ever seen Jesus, have we? But we believe, don't we? Why? Because of all of the infallible proofs that He's already given. And because we are changed lives, transformed, we're new creatures. We walk in a newness of life with a new heart and a new life given to us by this same Jesus who was a dead and now is alive. Alive forevermore. And not only alive, friend, but He ascended unto the Father at the end of that 40 days. And he is seated at the right hand of God, making intercession for us. Remember we talked about at the beginning, this same Jesus in Acts 1 and verse 8 tell, told the people that they should go into Jerusalem and Judea, uh, into Samaria, in the uttermost part of the earth, and the Holy Spirit would empower them. They would be able to be a witness, a martyr uh, for him, is what the word witness uh, boils down to, a martyr, one who is willing to die for a cause. And so he said that was going to be the, 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 the power that comes upon them in the Holy Spirit of God. And then we talked about the fact that it wasn't until Acts chapter number 8 that they actually went. Listen to me very carefully. 
We don't need something crazy to happen, something miraculous to happen. We don't need to see anything for us to be obedient to God. We've already experienced the Lord Jesus Christ in salvation. We've already seen it in others. We, we see the sun come up every morning. We see the creation, and the creation speaks of God. But even if we deny that, doesn't matter one iota, God is still true, God is still right, and God is still good. It doesn't matter if the atheists deny it. One day every knee shall bow, and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. Amen. And so this same Jesus, this same Jesus appeared by the seaside. If you remember back in John chapter number 20, uh, he appeared at the seaside and he told the disciples, he said, have you any meat? And, and they said, no, we fished all night. He said, go cast your net on the other side. And when they heard those words, they started to remember. They started to understand, this is Jesus. And then right after that, he talks to Peter. Three times, he gives Peter an opportunity to tell Jesus that he loves him. And then Jesus said, go and feed my sheep. Listen to me very carefully, y'all. It's the resurrected Savior. It's the Holy Spirit of God sent to us from that resurrected Savior that gives us power to go into the world and to live a glorious existence for Jesus, by the way, we're trophies of His grace. How many of y'all believe that? Amen. And being a trophy of His grace doesn't mean that we're perfect, but it does mean that we are being used. We are symbols of the victory of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I know you and I are stuck in our homes and, and things aren't normal right now, but don't ever forget. What, don't, please don't ever forget. No matter what avenue you have, no matter where you are, and when this thing is over, you're still a trophy of God's grace, and you are still to be a representative of the glory and the power and the strength and the might and the trust of Almighty God. Are y'all with me this morning? Amen. So this same Jesus showed Himself alive, and we see the, some of the recap, some of that, uh, the recap of the infallible proofs in the last part of the Gospel of John. Then Peter said something very interesting that I think we need to stop. This same Jesus is the same Jesus that deals with us on an individual, uh, personal basis. In, in John chapter 21 at the end, uh, Peter comes and, and he's talking about the, the disciple that, that Jesus loved, which happens to be John himself. And he starts to ask questions about uh, who's, going to be, uh, who's going to be blessed and rewarded so forth, who's going to be with you. And then he starts to talk about John, and, and Jesus makes a statement. He said, don't worry about that. Don't worry about what they're going to do. He said, you personally need to follow me. And I want you to understand this today. Stop worrying about what everybody else is doing. Don't worry about what other churches are doing. Uh, don't worry about what other believers are doing. You need to follow Jesus. Amen. And if you follow Jesus, you're going to walk in light. You're going to walk in truth, and you're going to walk in discernment. Don't believe everything you hear, people. Don't believe everything you read. Don't believe everything the government's trying to tell you about this virus. And don't believe everything you hear on the, on the ABC, NBC, CBS News. You need to have a little bit of spiritual discernment. And when you have a little bit of spiritual discernment, you won't walk in so much fear. You won't be so scared. You will want to stand firm and stand true. And regardless of six feet, 12 feet, 2 feet, 10 feet, you can't help but open up your mouth and tell whomever's behind the mask in front of you all Amen. about Jesus. Amen. Come on, y'all. We are still to be witnesses in our Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria. And by the way, when you talk about those places, I want you to understand something very carefully. This same Jesus showed himself alive, and this same Jesus gave some encouraging and some directive words to his disciples. He said, you shall be witnesses of me. Again, that word witnesses is the word martyrs, where we get the word martyr from, which means that you don't care about anything else other than getting the message of Jesus out, and you are willing to die to do it. He said, you're going to go into Jerusalem. Our Jerusalem's Waynesboro, folks. Our Jerusalem is our, our street, our area, our hometown. Hey, you might be stuck at home, but so is your neighbor. You might be stuck at home, but so is the guy living behind you. You might be stuck at home, but so is somebody across the street. And you can still open up your mouth. And in your Jerusalem, you can be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And open up your voice. Open up your mouth and tell the world about Jesus. Amen. You realize there's still empty spots. Invite them to the next parking lot service. Come on, y'all. And we can still live in this victory. You're to be witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea. What's our Judea? Our Judea is all of Augusta County. Our, our Judea is all of the region around us. You can go to Augusta, Rockingham. You can take the whole state 
as our Judea if you wanted to, no matter where you go. And by the way, if you're cowering at home and not doing anything, you cannot ever tell anybody about Jesus. Amen. Let me say it one more time. Come on, if you're cowering at home, you can do nothing. You cannot tell anybody about Jesus. Right. You go to the gas station, leave a track. You go to the gas station, tell the next person beside you getting gas. You got to go to the doctor, tell somebody in that doctor's office about Jesus. And tell them, folks, this world needs Jesus. And this world is more open right now to hear the gospel than at any time I've ever seen in my life. People want to know there's hope. People want to know there's help. People want to know that God is still in control, that God is still powerful, and that God is still on His throne. And the problem is, we have a bunch of church people that are cowering in their homes, scared to go out, scared to open up their mouth, scared, scared, scared. Live victorious. You're more than conquerors. You are in Christ, church. Amen. Don't live in fear. That's right. Then we go into Samaria. What's our Samaria? Samaria is enemy territory. If you know anything about the Bible, you'll understand this. The Jews and the Samaritans hated each other to the point where they would kill each other sometimes. And you and I need to realize that there is a part of this lost world that wants you as the church to be scared to death. They want you to be cowering in your homes. They want you to hide behind your mask. They want you to be afraid. They want you to keep your mouth shut. They want to keep us from worshiping. They want to keep us from praising. They want to keep us out of our parking lots. There's still an element in this country that wants that, but we're to go into that Samaria and tell them that they are a bunch of stiff-necked, uncircumcised of heart and uncircumcised of flesh. They are wicked and vile and disgusting in the sight of God, and except they repent, they shall perish. That's right. Come on. We have got to stop being afraid and cowering. And it's time for us to stand up. And even in the midst of a pandemic, you can go into your Jerusalem. You can go into your Judea. And oh, yes, friend, you can even invade enemy territory. Somebody needs to send this to our governor. That's right. Because that man's wicked as a day is long. He desperately needs Jesus. That's right. Are you all with me? Hey, I ain't afraid to say it. Don't be afraid to hear it. That's right. And then into the uttermost part of the world. This week, uh, I got a, a very encouraging message from one of our missionaries in Nicaragua. And our missionary in Nicaragua sent me some video. Uh, and believe me, the virus is down there too. But in Nicaragua, he had gathered up around 2,000 people in a town square and preached the gospel. And hundreds of people responded. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen to me very carefully. I, I read underneath his little, uh, underneath his caption, he, he made captions of his Facebook page and, and sent it to me. And he said, Paul, can you believe this coming from the American church? And from the American church, pastors and Christian people all over America, how dare you get these people together? How dare you meet in the middle of a pandemic? How dare you? Well, What's more important, that they die and go to heaven or that they die? You understand, we're all going to die, and those people are going to die anyway. They need to hear about Jesus. That's right. And it's more important to get the gospel of Jesus out than it is for us to cower and be afraid. We've got to tell the world about Jesus. Amen, brother. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. There's a whole lot of people living in fear out there, and I am not one of them. And I don't want you to be one of them. Stop drinking the Kool-Aid and get back to the book and get back to the Bible, the blood of Jesus, and the blessed hope. We need to tell the world about Jesus. Amen. Not only that, this same Jesus showed himself a lot. This same Jesus gave us encouraging words to go into the world, but also commanding words. And then he gave a commandment to these disciples that they were supposed to wait in Jerusalem for the promise to come. But once that promise came, they were to go into the world and preach the gospel. By the way, Acts chapter number 2, the Bible tells us the story, the account, the biblical factual representation of the time in which the Holy Spirit of God came as a mighty, the psalm was as a mighty rushing wind. Listen to me very carefully. Every one of us today, when we get saved, we get the Holy Spirit of God. 
The moment you bow your knee to Jesus, you have been empowered. You have been given the very Spirit of God Almighty. You have been given the Holy Spirit of God to go into all the world, to your Jerusalem, your Judea, your Samaria, and even the uttermost part of the world, and to tell the world, and tell the world, and tell the world, regardless of what happens to you physically. Amen. Come on. We are missionaries. Oh, we need one. Yes, that's right. We are to be proclaimers of the truth. And we are to live victorious over hell, over death, and over the grave. And I say that today. We're to live victorious over hell, death, and the grave. And almost all the church in America would say, Amen. Until it comes time to put shoe leather to it. Because I believe we're afraid of death. That's right. Come on. And I believe we're afraid of the grave. That's right. I believe in American Christianity, we've talked a lot. Oh, we've flapped our jaws a lot. But now the rubber meets the road. And most of us are cowering. It's about as quiet out there in that parking lot as it usually is on Sunday morning in the sanctuary. <laughs> I ain't afraid to die. I'll die for Jesus. Yep. You won't even take your mask off to tell somebody about Jesus. <laughs> in Walmart. Come on, bro. Oh, I'll die for Jesus. I'll take a bullet for Jesus. Really? You won't even take the sword and slice up the devil any for Jesus. That's right. You want an encouraging message today? Uh, let me give you encouragement in the middle of all this crazy nonsense. You are going to die. Hey, come on. <laughs> That's the great news. Hey, Amen. You're going to die. You're either going to die in a car wreck, you're going to die of old age, you're going to choke on a chicken leg. Don't say it can't happen. I think it happened to James Joplin, didn't it? Yep. Come on, y'all. You're going to die of something. The thing is, you're going to die and stand before God. This world is going to die and stand before God. Thank God to hear about Jesus. They've got to have a chance. They've got to have hope. And it's up to us to get beyond this border of a sickness and a disease and stand up and be real and say, If I die, I die. But I've got to tell the world. If I perish, I perish. I'm not all that important. I'm nothing. And I'm going to die one day anyway. You see, the church for a lot of years in America, and I'm saying the church in a whole, there's some people, individuals in the church, that are standing firm and standing strong. Y'all with me on that? But the church in America for the last, probably the last 50 to 100 years has talked a good game. Oh, we're not afraid to die. Look at us. We're very afraid. Oh, we're not afraid. Bless God, we're going to stand up. And look at us. Come on, y'all. You do know I love you, don't you? You do know I'm not going to leave you discouraged, I hope. Amen. Let's go back to our text. I want to show you something encouraging. You go ahead and honk the horn when you're there. Good. All right, that's enough. That's cool. We don't want to wake up all the neighbors. Look at this very carefully. Jesus said this. Drop on down to verse number 9, 10, and 11. And I want to show you this. This same Jesus, this same Jesus that died on the cross for our sins, this same Jesus that gave us His Spirit, this same Jesus that said, unless you're willing to take up your cross and follow me, you're not worthy of me. Unless you're willing to die for me, you're not worthy of me. Unless you're willing to lay it all on the line, not talk a good game, but put on the equipment and get in the game. You're not worthy of me. This same Jesus 
that for 40 days walked on the earth. You think about discouragement. You think about distress. You think about uh, this thing affecting us. Imagine those disciples who walked with Jesus. And then all of a sudden, Jesus is dead for three days. And everybody's mocking them and making fun of them. And now Jesus is alive. And for 40 days, they're walking with Jesus. You talk about victory. Here's Jesus. He's alive. He is alive. And you imagine the things that maybe they said that aren't written in the Bible. All the claims that they're making about standing strong and standing firm. Jesus said this, I can't stay here, boys. i got to go away. But if I go away, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will come again. And I will receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Now I want you to understand this church and don't ever forget this. We talk about living victory and having victory. We're going to be almighty and powerful. Let me tell you something. You're going to stand for God. It's going to cost you something. Amen. Do you realize that the disciples themselves, out of 12, there was only one that made it to old age? All the rest of them were slaughtered because of their belief in Jesus. They were thrown off of roofs. They were beaten, stabbed, crucified, upside down. They were suffering for the cause of Christ. Now look up here and listen to me. I can tell you this, and I don't say this lightly, but I have watched the church in America through this pandemic bow down to the government and bow down in fear. And I have watched the church in America just succumb to everything that the devil is throwing at them. Yep, come on. This, my friend, shows this lost world that we talk, but we don't do. Yep. We talk, but we're still afraid. We want to shout about our victory in our churches. But you get us in public and we'll cower down. And if you don't think that's a precursor to a strong wolf attacking you, you, dear Christian, have your head in the sand. You have not seen change yet, but change is coming. I am not a prophet, nor am I the son of a prophet, but I can tell you this. Inevitably, this country will fall, and inevitably, the Christians in this country will be persecuted. And I can tell you this. If I were today standing on the other side of the fence, and I was still the old lost me, I'd be saying this is the perfect time to attack the church and to attack Christianity because we've already seen they talk but they live in fear. They talk of heaven but they're really of the world. They talk of victory. They're already defeated. Church, you are not needing to live defeated. The Bible says we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. We have overcome this world. Amen. Do you think that everybody in this neighborhood likes what I'm doing right now? Do you think everybody in this neighborhood likes what we're doing right now? Do you think everybody in this neighborhood is in their houses going, Amen, preacher, tell them about it. Or do you think they're going, boy, I wish somebody would shut him up. Y'all listening? Come on, bro. Hey, Christian, America's not the same as it was a couple weeks ago. 
But hey, Christian, you don't have to be the same as you were a couple weeks ago. That's right. You've got time now to pray. You've got time to read. You've got time to study. You've got time to come to a resolve. It's time now that we stop talking, but we put on the armor of God, and we stand firm and stand strong, and we go about with the sword of the Lord, and we do the business that God has given us to do. And everybody you meet that's walking around with a mask on, they're scared of dying. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them about Jesus. They're scared. That's right. Tell them about Jesus. Amen. Tell them about Jesus. Hey, church, I'm not trying to beat you up. I'm not trying to beat you down. I'm trying to challenge you. I'm trying to encourage you. I'm five foot about nothing. I don't measure up to nobody's standard. I ain't nobody. Are you listening to me? And neither is anybody in this parking lot. Right. You ain't nobody. Not on your own. But because we have been born again, bought and paid for with the blood of God, and we have been sealed by the Spirit of God, we are somebody in this world. And the somebody that we are in this world are ambassadors of another home. We've got to die to get out of this one so that we can go to our, our real home. Stop talking and start living. Stop cowering and start standing. Stop cowtailing and start standing firm on your faith. Take the sword, which is your offensive weapon, and go into Judea and Jerusalem and Samaria and yea, even to all the world, and tell them about Jesus. Do you believe you can? Yes, you can. Why? I can do all things through Christ Jesus, which strengthens me. So next time, listen, y'all still with me this morning? We're about done. Do you realize I love you? Amen. But do you realize I, I am really concerned about some of you? I'm really concerned. I'm concerned at the amount of fear you're living in. I'm concerned with the amount of fear that you have succumbed to. You don't need to. You don't need to. You have an appointed day to die. And when your appointed day is, you're going to die. And ain't no mask going to stop it. That's right. And ain't no six feet going to stop it. That's right. You're going to be dead as four o'clock. Yep, come on. And after this, the judgment. I want to encourage you now. When you go from this place, go victorious. How many of y'all are saved and you know it? Amen. Have you saved and you know it? Tell the world about it. Amen. How many of you realize that you don't need to live in fear? Amen. And how many of you realize now when you go and you see people living in fear, it is your opportunity to be an ambassador from another homeland to tell them you're not afraid. Amen. I'm not afraid. You don't need to be afraid. We're nobodies made somebody through Jesus. And the somebody that we are is an ambassador of another home. This ain't our home. Just passing through. Sadly, sadly, the vast majority of people in this world are lost. Let's pray this morning. I don't want you discouraged. Are you discouraged? If you're discouraged, don't be discouraged. If you're convicted, that's what I want. Challenged, that's what I want. Maybe even chasing a little, but not defeated. Amen. Get the real message of the message. And stand up. You're bulletproof till Jesus says it's time to come home. Amen. Let me say it another way. You are bulletproof till God says it's time for you to come home. Amen. Live like it. You might actually change people and make a difference in this world. Let's pray. Father God, we want to thank you so much for allowing us the opportunity just to gather together. Now, Lord, I know it was a hard message for, for such a time as we're living in, but I pray, God, we would heed what it is that you had in it. And, Lord, you know the struggle that I had all night. Father, just wrestling with this message. 
all weekend just wrestling with this message. And I pray, God, for these today who don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, that, God, you would show them without Jesus there is a real hell, and that they desperately need to repent and get right because hell is real and hell is coming. And I pray, God, that you would show that sinner nearest hell today that they need to repent, stop living religious, and begin right with you personally. And I pray, God, that you would help the church today to stop living in fear and stop listening to all of the world's message and just get back to the Word of God. And I pray, God, that you would just do that which only you can do. And I pray, God, that you would bring protection to us as we go into the world and preach the gospel. But, Lord, no matter what happens to us physically, we're so thankful we are saved eternally. Thank you, Jesus. And I pray for Shenandoah Heights Baptist Church today. I pray, God, that when we stand together at judgment, we would not be ashamed. But we would stand saying we did not live in fear, but we took the opportunity while the world is in fear to show the world that we have something greater. We have someone greater. And we are going somewhere greater than what we have here. Please, Lord, help us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now today is your time of invitation right there in your car. Now listen to me. It's a time of invitation. That don't mean y'all drive through the building, all right? Ain't no altar at the wall, so stay where you're at. But it's your time of invitation right there in your automobile. If you've swallowed the Kool-Aid and you're living in fear, you need to repent. You need to get your heart right with God so that we can now go into this world and be what we're supposed to be, unafraid of hell, death, and the grave. It has no sting for us. Amen. And we are to be ambassadors of another home. And we're to be proclaimers of salvation to a scared and dying world. While we sing this hymn, Oh, How I Love Jesus, I want you to seek in your heart, do you love Jesus? Are you in love with Jesus? Perfect love casteth out fear. We talked about that the other week. So if you love Jesus, you are not going to be living in fear. Matter of fact, your boldness is going to be pretty perverse to a scared and dying world. And your boldness is going to look perverse to a church that's cowering in fear. Be bold. Bold in your witness. Bold in your gospel. Bold in your faith. Oh, how I love Jesus. If you need to get things right with God right now in your car, it's perfect time for you to get it right with God. While we sing, Oh, how I love Jesus, Sing it with all your heart, church, if you love Jesus today and you're not living in fear. Let's sing, Oh, How I Love Jesus. dismiss. Now listen, I'm going to be right here. Um, obviously, you got to stay in your cars. But if you just need me to pray for you, or you need Denny to pray for you, while you're headed out, Wes will be over here, Justin's over here, Denny and I are around. If you need somebody just to pray for you today, then let us stop by your car right where you are and pray for you. 
let us be an encouragement to you. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. If you are desperately needing prayer today, that's what we're here for. And let us be a blessing to you. Let's pray. Father God, thank you once again for the opportunity to just be gathered together. Now, Lord, I know it was a hard message, but Lord, one that I feel very firmly you, you delivered to my heart and my soul. Father, you know my own fears, my own anxieties, and you know, Lord, how this message stepped on my toes. And I thank you for that. I praise you for that. I love you, Lord, and I thank you for convicting me of my fear, my anxiety. And I ask you now, God, that you would just help each one of us. Lord, I feel, I sense in my very soul change. I fear and I sense in, in my very soul that this could just be an opportunity. I pray it's not a prayer I'm wrong, but an opportunity for opposition to the church in a greater way than we've ever seen. Please, Lord, don't let this be a catalyst for falling away. And please, Lord, don't let this be an opportunity for the devil to seize and to wreak havoc on the church. I pray we would repent and turn our hearts to you. Lord, help this congregation this week to get past any fear and dread and to be great and bold witnesses. Please give us opportunities. Help us to see those opportunities and help us to seize those opportunities. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless y'all. Have a wonderful day.